Hi Aquarius! Welcome to Universal Guidance Tarot. It's time for February's reading. Wow! I'm going to pull out a universe card to get started with in this reading. So I'm going to shuffle these a few times here for Aquarius. And this is what we're going to start with before we do our two-part reading. So for Aquarius, what do they need to know? Glasses on. Where's Aquarius's card? Right there. It says, I attract the essence of my thoughts. It's card seven. So I'm going to read this to you. The law of attraction and its magnetic power reaches into the universe and attracts other thoughts that are vibrationally like it and brings you that. And so, you are getting the essence of what you are thinking about, whether it is something you want or something you do not want. So what this is saying is, um, if you catch yourself thinking about something you do not want, don't dwell on that. Change your thoughts. Think, change your thoughts to what you do want and dwell on that. And that way you will attract what it is that you want from the universe. Okay, let's get started on your reading. Let's shuffle these a few more times. For Aquarius. going to do a couple. I've already shuffled them really well. I'm just going to do a couple more little shuffles here for Aquarius. Okay, let's get started here. What do you need to know? What's coming in? What's leaving your energy? What advice is there for you from the universe for February for Aquarius? Ooh. For February for Aquarius, please, universe. Okay, let's see what we got going on here. I put the cards down in the same order that they come out of the deck. This is a general reading that will not resonate with everyone. Um, <clears throat> you can take from the reading what does gen resonate, or um, maybe get a private reading. I do private readings if you just click the description box below this video and send me an email. We can get started. And we have a couple cards left for the second part of the reading. So, Aquarius, we have the Eight of Swords here. Eight of Swords is surrounding the entire reading. This is the feeling of being trapped, the feeling of not knowing what to do, where to go, how to move, not seeing the truth and the clarity that's all around you. So it, it's, it's not really by choice. It is an illusion, though. Um, you have a blindfold on, but look, the rest of you, you're not bound up in any way. I mean, you can reach out, you can feel that the swords are there, you can... You know, instead, you're just kind of standing there, not seeing them, ignoring them. Uh, mm. So this is what we're going to talk about. This is the overall energy. I think you're going to be doing some waking up here. <laughs> uh, I think you're going to take your blindfold off. I betcha. Um, I have the Fool's card in your highest energy, Aquarius. So the fool, this is living in the moment. This is this is fun, carefree, throwing caution to the wind, taking just living day by day, not thinking of the future. Well, what happens with the fool is they usually find themselves at the edge of the cliff, and that's what's happening here. Whereas you start to look forward towards the future, and normally when two people are living in the energy of the fool, a lot of times you, you both don't end up looking forward at the same time. So you're, you're kind of ignoring, I think, the fact that you are living in the energy of the fool with someone, if this is your reading, okay? So, um, you know, and so ignoring it, it's like, uh, maybe it'll work its way out. Uh, I don't want to deal with it. I don't want to bring it up, whatever it might be. Let's keep reading. I have the Two of Swords next to the Fool and right above the Eight of Swords. 
So the two of swords, you got your heart guarded. That's why you're not dealing with it. You're afraid that, you know, they're not going to like what you have to say. <laughs> your swords are up in self-protection and there's the moon of enlightenment. But until you take that blindfold off, you're not going to be enlightened, okay? Because um, there's no way to unless you actually can see the moon. So you prefer, you're preferring to live in this energy of just not dealing with it in hopes that it works itself out. So you're staying in the energy of the fool for a while here. And then I have the magician right next to the two of swords. There's the infinity symbol, the symbol of intuition and knowing. Well, you know, there is one thing. You know what you deserve. You know your worth, okay? You know you have all the tools it takes to make a relationship work. You know that you have the power to manifest just what it is that you want. And I think you think that by ignoring the situation for now is your way of manifesting what it is that you want instead of just... Because you're afraid they're going to leave and break your heart if you were to bring up um, that you're thinking about the future now. Okay? So I have the Strength card under the Fool and next to the so Eight of Swords. Well, this is the card for Leo. Leo might be strong in your chart or someone else's around this reading. But this is um, about knowing what to do, okay, and finding the strength and the courage to do it. So you are going to figure this out. You are going to come out of the energy of the Eight of Swords. You can only handle that for so long. Anybody, you know. I have the Seven of Wands next to the Eight of Swords and right under the Magician. I feel like you've confided in someone about the situation, uh, maybe more than one person. I feel like there's a lot of opinions coming in here, all those wands about how you should, you know, move your life forward. But you're pretty much on guard about that because you know that you have the power to manifest what it is that you want. And I think you have a lot of self-confidence, except when it comes to talking about this to whoever this person is. So you're kind of like, you got a wand, you're on guard about these other wands coming in. So you might listen, but it's like, but you're on guard. You're, you're like, no, I want to do it myself, you know. I have the High Priestess under the Strength card next to the Three of Pentacles. So the High Priestess, um, this is a card of intuition and knowing, so you got two cards. It's also a card of enlightenment. You know, in, in seeing what uh, is really going on out there. It's using, using your intuition. It's, it's like seeing in the crystal ball. This is under the strength card. So, um, you know, your intuition is going to play a huge part in this. You will be enlightened about what to do in this situation. And next to the Three of Pentacles, um, and this is under the Eight of Swords. So this is about butting heads, about security, stability, and groundedness. It's like, you know, it, it's like two against one. It's, it, 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 sometimes it can be a third energy that's around the picture somehow, and there could be. But this is also about not seeing eye to eye about um, security and stability and actually moving forward. So it's like one of these energies has to go, whatever energy it is that makes them feel like they can't do this, either needs to go so that you can move forward, or you're going to have to move forward on your own. I have the devil, and this is under the Eight of Swords. So this is, I think, why, another reason why that you're not bringing it up as of yet. But it looks like you will... You, you, you know what you need to do. It's just, I don't think this first part of the reading, you've actually done it yet. I have the devil here. This is the card for Capricorn. So Capricorn might be strong in someone's chart around this reading. But the energy is totally different. The energy is about being toxic. So they, there's some kind of energy. It's right next to that Three of Pentacles. And it's under the Seven of Wands. So everybody like has this opinion of how you should handle this. Okay, You're going to do it your way. There is no doubt here. And it is about, it, it doesn't allow the pentacle to come forward because of the toxic energy. There's three in this card. There's three in the Three of Pentacles. 
So there is another energy or person uh, associated with this that needs to be considered. And if it's an ultimatum, like it, you know, it's them or me, uh, you you just don't want to put that out there because you're you're afraid that it, they would pick them. So let's take out the rest of this reading for Aquarius, please. Come on. There's a Queen of Swords for Aquarius. stubborn right here hmm. or it's me just being slippery with them let's get these back in order okay okay I think I still need a couple one two three four five six one more one that's face up and here we go for Aquarius okay hmm. okay so I got the three of cups now the three of cups I, this is like a happy reunion this is celebration look at that there's so much celebration in there, and there's a lot of love. So I think you're going to still be connecting with this person. And that whatever it is that you have to do, it has to do with them running in and out of your life. Okay, so they're coming back in with this card. Male or female, Knight of Wands, right next to the Three of Cups. But it's going to be a happy reunion. And you know you have love for this person. If this is your reading, you do have love for this person. Um... And it, it feels as if you are going to speak up. And, and this because the Queen of Swords is right below the Three of Cups. But you are going to speak up about this. And by you speaking up, the next time they run in, because they're not real stable in your life, okay? Even though you love them. Um, I have the Ten of Swords. This is putting an end to all the pain and suffering that you've been going through. So this is really torturous, being in the Two of Swords and the Eight of Swords, especially for a long period of time, trying not to deal with it. Um, now you deal with it, and it puts an end to everything. But being that this is the Three of Cups, I think it's going to work out in your favor. I have the Queen of Swords right below the Three of Cups and next to the Seven of Wands. So the Queen of Swords, this is Air, Libra, Gemini, or Aquarius. So there you are, Aquarius, male or female. And you have your sword out. Next time they come back in, remember you're going to handle this your way. You're just going to ask the questions. You're going to be like, tell me the truth. What's going on here? What do you want from me? How do you see me? How do you see our future? Whatever your questions are. are and you're going to speak your truth. And you're going to seek the truth. And it has to do with commitment. Commitment. Are you ever going to commit? With the Ace of Pentacles being right next to the Queen of Swords and under the Knight of Wands. They may be coming in. They may be, and you don't even know it yet, is that they had commitment on their mind anyway. <laughs> uh, it's just that nobody said anything. And whatever these energies were down here, they must be ready to let go. Let me just keep reading. I had the King of Cups next to the Ace of Pentacles and under the Ten of Swords. Water, Pisces, Scorpio, or Cancer might be strong in their chart, but they do have a full cup of love for you. They just haven't been really fully handing it out. Now, this is what you're going to find out, okay? You come forth. You like, you gather up the strength. You gather up the courage. You know what you need to do, and you're doing it, and you're finding out, wait a minute. You know, they say, I do love you. Um, you know, I was even thinking maybe we could, you know, get engaged or, or maybe we could move in together or become a couple or monogamous or whatever the deal is here. So it kind of like 
takes all this pressure off you. This really becomes a good reunion when they come back into your life. Now, um, I have the King of Wands under the Queen of Swords and next to the Devil card. This is Fire, Aries, Leo, or Sagittarius. That might be strong in someone's chart around this reading. But this is your energy, and you're holding on to that staff of fresh starts and new beginnings and that sword right above you here. And it's all because of this toxic energy. And you're like, well, you know, you got to say something because you're going to move on with or without them. And it turns out they want to move forward with you. <laughs> so, um, you know, it's like you were so afraid to lose them, you know, and you finally come through with the, the courage to, to speak up and speak out. And you find out, wait a minute, uh, they have a lot more feelings for you than you knew. And then it all starts to come out. Okay. I have the tower card and this is part of what you're saying here is um, either this relationship has to go or we're, we have to move together forward together. So there's the tower. It's like the it's like the threat of the tower, but I don't think it's an actual ultimatum. I think it's just seeking the truth, okay? And it it's like by speaking the truth, you're letting them know that you will, if you have to move forward, you will. Because you're standing right next to this tower card with that staff of fresh starts and new beginnings. You want out of the energy of the fool, and you do want to start to look forward. They've been really slow on coming forward with a pentacle. So I have the Knight of Pentacles next to the Tower card. This is what's caused all this to happen, really, is they're not really good at showing. Well, they might be good at showing their love, but then they run out, and it disappoints you. And then, um, you know, as far as giving you hope for a future, they're not really good at that, and they're not good at showing their love. Um, and speaking, speaking their love. But um, they do have a pentacle. Look at that. They're not good at coming forward with it <laughs> either. This is the Knight of Pentacles. This is the slowest moving energy in the deck. They do have it. They have it. And when they come back in, you're going to find out they do have it. They do have it with them. So it has been on their mind too. Wow. Okay. Aquarius. I'm going to take out an angel card. Let's find out what your guardian angels and spirit guides have to say about this reading. I'm just glad that you finally break free of that eight of swords and that two of swords and decide to, you know, speak your truth and ask them for their truth. Because it just feels like it might go on and on and on and on forever and ever and ever until somebody does something. And you're the one who does it. Finally. In this reading. So Aquarius, let's pull out an angel card for you. It's card number four. It's called Organization. So I will read it to you. Your plans are on target and everything will flow more smoothly if you add a little organization and discipline to your methods. The key to success is to allow your creativity to be gently guided by logic. Be open to asking for help from someone very intellectual or seek out a mentor. So there could be some advice coming in that you're like, well, yeah, I think I'll, you know, maybe take that piece of advice, but the rest of you, uh, thanks anyway. <laughs> so... This is your reading, Aquarius, for February. Thank you for watching Universal Guidance Tarot. And I want to thank my guardian angels, my spirit guides, for helping me deliver you this message.